house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it. Like a smile with too much. A lot teeth. of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. My Grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. Barbara was a child star for two years until America grew out of it. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan, but I had no idea what was behind that door. Just like I had no idea where all this was gonna lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here.
December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. I thought about eating Christopher, but I held back. I kept eating and eating. My Halloween candy was all gone. Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. I jumped and I almost got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass.
imagined his face looking up and seeing mine through my talons. I swallowed him up, and I didn't chew one bit. Then I flew off to find something bigger. A mama rabbit! choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark! I rolled off a cliff and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. Everything had changed. Now I was a monster and I smelled people up. Passenger, I was still hungry. And across 
the water and smelt something in. Something I had to have, so I swam towards it. I slithered onto the sand, and the good smell went into an old pipe. I got closer and closer. All of my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse, his wife Ingeborg and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Odin's daughter Edie with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. It was a pretty big trace. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book.
From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin. And that he never talked about him. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom, and he did. At Barbara's funeral, we swore he'd never be afraid again, and he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that, Albert, I'm not gonna tell you again. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up, then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room.